morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to all of you, those present here in the church and those joining us remotely. We begin in the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. We pause now in order to once again express our sense of contrition and amendment with regard to the perhaps the major sins of our past life. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Father, you cause the minds of your faithful people to unite in a single purpose. Grant to your people that we may love what you command and desire what you promise, so that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true happiness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The whole congregation of the children of Israel arrived in the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people settled at Kadesh. It was here that Miriam died and here that she was buried. As the community had no water, they held a council against Moses and Aaron. The people contended with Moses, exclaiming, Would that we too had perished with our kinsmen in the Lord's presence. Why have you brought the Lord's assembly into this desert where we and our livestock are dying? Why did you lead us out of Egypt only to bring us to this wretched place, which has neither grain nor figs nor vines nor pomegranates? Here there is not even water to drink. But Moses and Aaron went away from the assembly to the entrance of the meeting tent, where they fell prostrate. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to them, and the Lord said to Moses, Take your staff and assemble the community you and your brother Aaron, and in their presence order the rock to yield its waters. From the rock you shall bring forth water for the congregation and their livestock to drink. So Moses took his staff from its place before the Lord as he was ordered. He and Aaron assembled the community in front of the rock, where he said to them, Listen to me, you rebels. Are we to bring water for you out of this rock? Then, raising his hand, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out in abundance for the people and their livestock to drink. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you were not faithful to me in showing forth my sanctity before the children of Israel, you shall not lead this community into the land I will give them. These are the waters of Meribah where the children of Israel contended against the Lord and where the Lord revealed his sanctity among them. The word of the Lord. Our response, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. 
Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tested me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, may no such thing ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, you Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. I remember reading somewhere a story of an African missionary who was translating um, the Gospel of John, I think it was, into the, the native language of the place where he was serving, and he couldn't find a word to translate to believe. And the native who was helping him thought for a moment and said, to believe should be translated to hear with the heart. Not a bad translation. Um, God speaks to us in physical uh, physical words which, uh, that we read, um, but he also speaks to us with a spiritual voice. He speaks to us in a way that only the heart that is loving and open can hear. And that's what Jesus meant when he said to Peter, No mere man has revealed this to you, or this translation here, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father has revealed it to you. It's sort of like uh, the, the words of the uh, responsorial psalm, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. To hear the voice of God, we need to be still. We need to be open. We need to be praying. Let us pray. We pray for the church throughout the world, and in particular our, our particular parish as part of that church, that we might continue to use our time and our talent and our treasure to foster God's plans and purposes in our world. We pray to the Lord. 
For all those who hold elected office, may they be led by the gospel as they develop policies and principles. May they always care for the poorest and the most needy among their constituents. We pray to the Lord. For all of those who hunger and thirst for holiness and righteousness, may God satisfy them. We pray to the Lord. Any intentions that you would like to add at this time? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithfully parted, and in a special way for our Mass intention this morning, Anne Guerra, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, you sent your Son to bring us salvation. Hear the prayers that we place before you today, for we ask them in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray together now that our sacrifice might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Father, you gained for yourself a people by adoption to the one sacrifice offered by Jesus on the cross. Bestow on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, he is the Word, through whom you made all things. He is the Savior you sent for our redemption. He took flesh by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. Stretching out his hands as he endured his passion, he broke the bonds of death and manifested the resurrection. And so we join angels and saints in praising you as we say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Although we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection of Jesus, your Son, and we offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that as we take part in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of faith, of hope, and of love, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the religious, the clergy, and all your people. Remember, too, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin, Joseph her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may merit to enter into eternal life that we might praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together now on the words that Jesus has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, our name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Give us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our times. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress while we await the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, Deacon. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Judge. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring each of us to life everlasting. An act of spiritual communion. I, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy. Graciously perfect us and sustain us so that in all things we may be pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Have a good day.